And so we come to the third and final game of this weekend, Six Nations. And what an absolute belter it's going to be. England versus Scotland at Twickenham, the Calcutta Cup. Normally, Scotland, difficult at Murray Field against England, but in, at Twickenham, not a happy hunting ground for them at all. Um, I don't know, maybe just this time it might be a little bit different. The Scots believe they can win. They've played some great rugby in this Six Nations so far. The English haven't, but they've played 3-1-3. Three, three. Mm. Which way is it going to go? Well, you've pretty much covered it all there, so I don't think um, I need really to say anything. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> um, you know, this, I would never have thought that prior to this tournament, England v Scotland would be a match I'd be excited about. And, you know, Scotland have, have got racked up some incredible victories. You know, Ireland and Wales, two sort of informed sides coming into this competition. Um, but for me, both those victories were at home. The only away match that they, they've had so far, they've lost. They should have won. You know, they've very um, narrowly lost to France. But it's that away performance that is the difference between teams being successful and not, and especially in the Six Nations. So I'm excited about seeing what Scotland are going to deliver at Twickenham and see if they can get over that voodoo. Because I think the last time they won, you know, at the HQ was, was nearly 30 years ago. Uh, if they can put that behind them, then we're going to see a very exciting match full, full of, of tries and running rugby, an endeavour, um, possibly with Billy Bunapola coming back as an exciting um, addition to the England back row, which has really not found its form at all during this campaign. Um, so a promising and exciting match, I think, is in store, but still one that I think England will edge. Yeah, you mentioned the back row, uh, normally uh, a strong point of, uh, of, of England's play, um, but uh, the Scots back row have actually done really well, uh, beating uh, Ireland and beating uh, Wales. So Billy Vunapola coming back I think will be a, a, a big plus for, for, for England. Um, but the, the Scots are really putting their hands up, aren't they, for the Lions in a way that they haven't before. The Grey brothers in the second row, both had a fantastic uh, campaign so far, and the back three, mm. uh, whoever it is, because Tim Visser wasn't even in the starting 15, mm. and was fantastic in the last game. So if you're going to kick, they've got to kick well, haven't they? Mm. They do, and you know, I, I think Scotland are really benefiting from having virtually their entire squad play at one club, which is which is Glasgow. But you know, when you've got Hogg at the back, you've got Finn Russell pulling the strings, you've You've got the Grey Brothers, as you mentioned. Um, you know, you've got you've got some really exciting guys across the paddock from one to fifteen that can change the game. Whereas for so many years, sadly, Scotland had one or two here or there, um, and that's the difference. And I think also the difference with Scotland is the confidence that they're gaining from the continuity of form that they can deliver. And I think that comes from the time they're spending at Glasgow. You know, building a performance against Leicester where they 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 milled Leicester at home at Welford Road. Um, and the majority of that side then goes into the international arena with a huge amount of confidence and belief in each other. Um, and that belief is vital when you come into close matches, which Six Nations games always are. England were embarrassed about their performance against Italy. Eddie Jones was furious. Uh, you've been there. I would imagine the, the, the training has been pretty, pretty full on since. Do you think actually uh, the performance and the okay it was in the one and they got a bonus point but they didn't put the 50 points that everybody thought that they would do you think actually that might be bad news for scotland um no i think the scotland side is a, is a changed beast and i think they, they they play much more sensible clever rugby they rely less on the emotion and the history of the bannock burns and all the you know the battles and the history that these two great nations have had um against each other I think now they, they play a much more sensible and organised game of rugby. Um, so no, I don't think that will bother them. I think, you know, the issues they'll have is, you know, can they stop the likes of Billy Foon and Poe, James Haskell getting over the game line if, if Vunapola is fit, of course. Because um, once England get in behind teams, then they have the ability with, with Daly, with Noel, who's looked so hungry since he's come back, um, you know, May, if, if he's in and around, Watson potentially coming back into, into some form now as well. Um, all these guys with, with electric ability. Um, and Teo, who's uh, scored, I think, in every game he's played in his international career. So um, whether it's from one metre, two metres, it doesn't matter. Um, that's a prolific record. So it's, 
if they, if they if they can stop those big ball carriers getting over the game line, then it makes England's life much harder. But I still think England will edge this game by a score, two scores. Um, at Twickenham, I'd like to think it'd be by two scores, but I think a much improved Scotland side will keep it narrower going into that very last uh, play of the game. So maybe England by five.